Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton and also WACA TV in Ashland. Tom Nappy and Larry Sacklad on the call. Ben Buckus on camera as Ashland Post 77, who is 11 and 5 on the season, takes on Newton Post 440 and what is a crucial matchup as far as the league standings go. And we are ready for action as the first hitter, Jimmy Hodgson, the shortstop, steps in to face Tim Ringy, who is set to deliver the first pitch of the game. And the first pitch is low, 1-0 and oh is the count on Hodgson. Let's take a look at the Newton lineup. Jimmy Hodgson, the shortstop, starting things off. Thomas Byrne, the center fielder, batting second as this is hit in the air over to right field and it is handled by Jonathan Pesson for the first out of the game. One away, that'll bring up Tom Barron, the center fielder. Jack Marsjanic, the right fielder batting third. Mike Gately, the first baseman in the cleanup spot. Brendan Mignoni, the pitcher batting fifth. Jackson Con Connerney, the left fielder batting sixth. Matt Gluck, the catcher batting seventh. Will Hodgson, the second baseman, batting eighth as that pitch just low. And Noah Shelton, the third baseman, rounding out the order for Newton post 440. It was a half game out of first place behind Ashland post 77 and Waltham. That one's fouled off the backstop. One and one is the count. Let's take a look at the post 77 field. Tim Ringy on the mound, Sean Jewett behind the plate. Zach Pesson over at first base. Ronan Bates at second base. Ethan Tominski, the shortstop. Louis Rossi at third. From left to right, Jake Obed, Ben Thomas, and Jonathan Pesson for post 77. As this is a bunt up the third base side, it goes, and it's bobbled by Rossi. And Byrne will reach on the error. A good bunt up the line. Rossi got a hand on it, unable to pick it up. Good lefty hitter. Uh, will bunt up the third baseline. He's already got two steps down to first, so it's very hard to make that play for the third base. And we got a first pitch time of 5.58 this evening. As this one is hit in the air, right side, will it stay fair? No. Yep, first pitch uh, a little bit late. It was a scheduled 5.30 first pitch, and it ended up happening at 5.58. So a slight delay in the start time. And of course, when you have those six o'clock start times, if the game takes a little bit longer, daylight will be a factor. As this one is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the infield grass, turns the throw to second, and he will get the lead runner. So Bates getting the force out as Mars Janik will reach on the four to six force out. Two away, and that'll bring up Mike Gately, the first baseman. Take you through the zone five standings in just a moment. Runner leading off of first. And that one is low. It's going to get by Duet. A wild pitch will allow Marsjanic to advance. Taking a look at the standings, it's Waltham in first at 12 and 5. Ashland a half game behind, 11 and 5. Newton right on the heels of both teams at 10 and 5. Natick also in the mix at 10 and 6. North Chelmsford, who Ashland beat yesterday, nine and seven, wind up in the pitch. And that is just inside. Lowell, eight and eight. Sudbury, eight and six. Medford, seven and eight. Hudson, two and 11. They're eliminated, and Bill Rick has forfeited their season. They finish one and 17. Wind up in the pitch. And this one is crushed over to left field towards the wall, but it is caught by Obed, who was playing a deep left field. And he makes the catch for the third and final out of the top half of the first. To the bottom of the inning we go. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM TV and WACA TV in Ashland. B bottom of the first inning, Ashland post 77 coming up to the plate. Let's take a look at their batting order. Jake Obed, the left fielder, starting things off, stepping in the box now. Ronan Bates, the second baseman, batting second. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, batting third. Ben Thomas, the center fielder in the cleanup spot. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, batting fifth. Wind up and the pitch. And that is in there for ball one. 
Sean Jouette, the catcher, batting sixth. Ethan Tominski, the shortstop, batting seventh. Jonathan Peston, the right fielder, batting eighth. And Tim Rangey, the pitcher, batting ninth. There's strike one, one and one on Obed. Taking a look at the Newton field, it's Brendan Mignoni, the pitcher, and he is set to deliver pitch number three to Obed. Upstairs, two and one. His battery mate is Matt Gluck behind the plate. Mike Gately over at first base. Will Hodgson, the second baseman. Jimmy Hodgson, the shortstop. Noah Sheldon at third base. As this is going to take a couple hops up the left side. Love by the third baseman. Throw to first is in time to get Obed. Five to three for out number one. That'll bring up Ronan Bates. A good throw across by Sheldon. From left to right for Newton post 440. It's Jackson Kinerny, Thomas Byrne, and Jack Marsjanic. A win here for Newton would actually allow them to surpass post 77 in the standings by a half a game. There's strike one to Bates. Wind up and the pitch. And that is down the third base side foul. Oh, nearly getting a piece of Coach Johnson as he was walking out of the dugout. Mignoni delivers up the left side, takes a big hop over the reach of the third baseman. What an awkward hop that was, and Bates is aboard. A single for Ronan Bates, and Lewis Rossi will step in. Well, that's a base hit all the way. You can't give this kid an error for that one. Oh, absolutely. That one was nearly impossible to field with that huge hop it took. Looked like it hit just the edge of where the grass meets the dirt. Checking at first, and almost got him, but he slides back safely. They don't have a first base coach over there, so he's out on an island. And he's taking a big lead off of that first base back. Slides back, another close call, but he's safe. Very quick move the 440 pitcher has. Dylan O'Leary going to head over there to coach first base. The bunt is a slow roller up the middle, a beauty of a bunt. The throw to first, it'll get Rossi, but Bates is pushed up to second. Good bunt there, almost had a chance to beat it out as well. Ben Thomas, the center fielder, will step in. Two outs, runner on second. Mignon from the stretch. Bates taking a big lead off a of second. That one outside for ball one. Hopkinton native Mike Whalen, the home plate umpire today. Mignoni from the stretch. Wind up and the pitch down low. Mignone has got very good mechanics. He's getting the most out of his size. 2 0 count. I've been told that uh, Brennan Mignone will attend uh, URI. 3 0 is now the count to Ben Thomas. I've been told that Mignoni is the number two for BC High behind Michael Vassell, who's committed to UVA. And a throw up to try to get Bates sleeping, but he slides back safely. Thomas draws the walk, so it's two on, two out. Zach Pest into the plate. And this is a crucial game for both teams today. Top four in the zone go to the playoffs. And Newton will surpass Ashland in the standings temporarily if they're able to pull this win off. There's a strike to Pesson. Looks like uh, Coach Johnson uh, gave a signal and it wasn't picked up by the hitter, whatever that was. Leg left and the pitch, and this is up the third base side. Glove by the third baseman, throw to first, and he got him. 
Five to three goes Pesson. That is the final out of the bottom of the first. It's a scoreless game as we head to the top of the second. Top half of the second inning, a scoreless game between Newton Post 440 and Ashland Post 77. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Due up for Newton is 5, 6, and 7. The pitcher, Brendan Mignoni, the left fielder, Jackson Canerney, and the catcher, Matt Gluck as Tim Ringy set to deal. And this is hit in the air, a high fly ball to left field. Obed is under it and makes the catch. It's the first time this year I've seen two of the players coaching third and first. Usually the head coach will take care of third base and leave one of his players over there at first. This is an interesting alignment they have. Jackson Canerney steps in. Well, I guess we'll see how it works out. Breaking ball drops a little bit low, 1-0. and oh. Ringy deals. Strike one. Grabs the inner corner there. Leg lift and the pitch. Fouled away, one and two. Ringy set to deal the one, two. And this is hit up the third base side. It ends up foul. Ross, you better hope that ball went foul. Seems like the turf is very hard today. It'll be interesting uh, throughout the course of the week with rain expected in the next couple days to see how this turf looks when playoffs start Friday. As this is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the infield grass glove by the shortstop. Tominski throws across and gets the out. Six to three goes Canerney. Two away, Matt Cluck, the catcher, stepping in. This is the first time this season, Larry, that I think we've seen uh, Ethan Tominski get the nod at shortstop. Looking good so far. He's played a flawless second base, but they've mixed up things today. There's no Jackson Horning in the lineup who normally occupies shortstop. Coach must have a lot of confidence in him to play short. Ringy deals, a little bit low, one and one. Leg lift and the pitch. Upstairs, two and one. O seventy seven 77 getting a huge victory yesterday. We had that broadcast for you as they beat North Chelmsford 4-1 to one right here at Ashland Middle School. Up the third base side, and that is going to be a fair ball. Gluck is going to round first and head back to the bag as Obed quick to get there. It is a two-out single. Not, not one of the speedier runners we've seen, Gluck. Willie Hodgson, the second baseman, steps in. Swinging strike. Clark getting just a two shuffle step lead off first base, so they probably saw him run down to first base and realize he's not a threat to steal. Leading a bit off of first, and this one's hit in the air over to shallow center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. And it is a single for Hodgson. Gluck up to second, two on, two outs. Noah Shelton, the third baseman, to step in. Ball not hit particularly hard, but landed in the right spot. Yep, placed that one perfectly. Why 
wind up behind the pitch. Down low, and it gets by Jewett. A wild pitch will allow both base runners to push up. Gluck up to third, Hodgson up to second. That's a rarity for Jewett to miss a couple of yeah. balls in front of him today. I don't blame either of those on Jewett, though. There's a called strike. Two outs, two runners in scoring position. There's a ball. That looked very close. Two and one is the count. And we certainly like when uh, Mike Willen is the umpire. It, he is sure to give us what the count is over here. No comparison to the umpire yesterday, Larry. Who, Grandpa? <laughs> he couldn't even lift his arm up. Maybe he had arthritis or something. And that is a ball. Three and two is the count now on Shelton. Runner leading a bit off of third as this one is hit in the air over to the right side. Pesson jumps up and gloves it. A nice catch by Pesson for the third and final out of the inning. Despite two runners in scoring position, it remains a scoreless game as we head to the bottom of the second. Bottom of the second inning, due up for post 77 is the six, seven, and eight hitters. Sean Jewett, the catcher, Ethan Tominski, the shortstop, and Jonathan Pesson, the right fielder. Scoreless between Newton and Ashland. Two left on base. The last half inning by post 440. A great catch by the first baseman, Zach Peston, allowed post 77 to get out of the inning as Sean Jouette takes a strike. Wind up and the pitch. That one low, one and one. You'll notice the uh, size difference between the two catchers. Yeah, Matt Gluck is a big dude. <laughs> and Sean Jewett is rather slight for a catcher. Certainly very solid behind home plate, however, as this one is hit towards the fans over on the right side. Foul, one and two. They're getting their money's worth down there. Absolutely. Also a nice suntan. Wind up and the pitch. This is hit in the air over to right field. That'll drop in front of Mars Janik for a base hit. So Jouette is aboard with no outs to start off the bottom of the second. I'll bring up Ethan Tominski, the shortstop. Jouette taking a bit of lead off of first. That one in there for a strike. The tail of the tape on Mr. Tominski, he's 5'7", 128 pounds at weigh-in. Runner leading off of first, that one upstairs. One and one the count. And Tominski out of Ashland High School. Runner leading off of first. And that one's fouled away. One and two. Runner on first, no outs. Mignoni working from the stretch. Upstairs it goes, two and two. The Ashland base runners are not 
getting too far off the bag. Pitcher has got a good move over to first base. He deals. Just high, full count. Runner taking a bit of a lead off of first. Wind up and the pitch. And that is a called strike three. Tominski did not like it. One out. Jonathan Pesson will step in. I thought that was a good pitch. I thought so too. Checking at first, runner just back. Good. And as you mentioned, certainly a good pickoff move by Mignoni. He swings his arm back and forth a few times and takes a peek over. Runner testing his patience once again is that one upstairs. Pesson looking down a third baseline to get a signal from Coach Johnson. Line up and the pitch. Runner taking off from first. The throw up is going to be. The throw was in time, but the tag was never placed by Hodgson, and Juet has the stolen base. He swam to the bag like Justin Pedroia does. Well, it certainly worked, and uh, the Newton coach, James Greeley, is going to come out, I believe, for a discussion with the umpire. He didn't like that call too much, but I didn't see the tag uh, even come close to Juet, so I think that was a good call by the umpire. Well, I don't know what he's out there arguing for. It's a judgment call he can argue till the cows come home he's got nobody to point to I could just be out there for a description of the call as well but after a brief talk he'll head back to the dugout so now it's a runner on second with one out he'll brush off home plate and Jonathan Pesson will step back into the box One and one count on the right fielder. Well, Jouette certainly lucky that that tag was not well placed by Hodgson because the throw was certainly a good one up the pipe. Wind up and the pitch, the bunt pulled back, and that'll get by the catcher. And now Jouet up to third. He'll round third, but go back to the bag. And that is a pass ball there. Gluck certainly distracted by that bunt behind home plate. Third baseman isn't sure where to place himself right now, whether he should be in on the grass or in line with the base, because Jouet's going to make his presence known down the third baseline. They're gonna try the bunt again, and this time he'll lay it down, and the pitcher will turn to home and throw over to home plate to avoid the run scoring. Good move by the pitcher, saved a run, but everybody's safe. So Jonathan Pesson reaches, that puts runners on the corners with one out, and Tim Ringy, the pitcher, will step in the batter's box. Some good base running by Sean Jouette coming down the line, realized that the pitcher is going to flip it home in time and turns back and heads back to third. And now Gluck will head to the mound to have a discussion with Mignoni. For those They're of you probably talking about uh, the runner that takes off to second. What are they going to do? Is the shortstop or the second baseman going to come in and cut the ball off? Are they going to let it through? early in the game. And I'm interested to see here if uh, they're going to keep the bunting going. Ringy steps back into the right-handed batter's box, and Mignon's set to work from the stretch. Both runners leading, runner from first taking off, and a pitcher will turn over to second and get the throw over. And of course, you know this is a little bit of trickery to try to give Jouette 
an opportunity to get home. The runner is able to get back to first as he's chased down the line by the shortstop. Or excuse me, that was the second baseman chasing him up the line of first base. Jewett did the right thing. He shuffled down, shuffled down, shuffled down, depending on how close. Checking at first, they almost got him, but he's just safe. This is what Post 77 has done very well this season, manufacture these runs. Yeah. And that is going to get by the throw over, and that is going to allow Jewett to score. And also the runner from first to advance to second. It's 1-0 Post 77. Sean Jewett scores on the errant throw, passing up to second. And that is exactly what Post 77 hoped for is Coach James Greeley out to have a discussion with his pitcher, Brendan Mignoni. 77 is playing very aggressive on the bases tonight, more than they normally do. Yeah, they certainly are. Well, they've, uh, they have a lot of speed in the lineup tonight and they're taking advantage of that. Well, the they should get a good back. lead. There's still only one out in the inning, runner on second. Newton did have the wheel play on with a shortstop. Goes to cover third as the third baseman charges. There's a called strike. A little extra mustard on that pitch. 1-1-2 one, one, ringy. Runner leading a bit off of second. The bunt is going to be strike two. Runner thought about taking off from second. He'll end up heading back as Cluck was challenging him there. A one and two count. So it looks like the bunt and run was on there. Probably take it off now. Mignoni set to deliver the one-two. That one will get by the catcher and Pesson will push up to third. A wild pitch. Two and two. Well, you can tell that these post-77 base runners getting in the head of Brendan Mignoni. As this is up the right side, a slow roller, a run will score, and everybody's safe. An RBI single for Ringy. A lot of blood on that baseball. Second baseman had to just squeeze the ball. He didn't have a play. And that was one awkward hit ball, but it does the trick. Jake Obid steps in. Obid calls time, steps out of the batter's box. Good piece of hitting by Ringy. Did he balk? I don't think so. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike. Well, Mignoni probably thinks of himself as a pick master, and when he's down behind in the game, he's looking over there to redeem himself. They're called strike. 0 oh and 2 is the count on Bates, or excuse me, on Obit. Bates on deck. Swinging strike, and Obit will go down. Two away. Bring up Ronan Bates. Will Coach Jones and uh, send him and have Bates lead off in case he gets thrown out? We shall see. That one low in the dirt. Good job by Gluck keeping it in front. One and oh. I think 
think at this point you just let Bates swing away here and try to keep the run scoring going in this inning. You may be right, Thomas. Runner leading off of first. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Runner over at first base is kind of on his own now. I don't see any signals from third base coach. Check in, and that one was close, but he's safe. And Yoni from the stretch, set to deliver the 1-1. One -one. In the dirt, once again, Gluck being put to work there. Two and one. The big boy, that Gluck, can cover a lot of ground behind the plate. Checking at first, runner back safe. It's Tim Ringy over at first. Another example of his love of his pickoff move. Ray leading again. Upstairs it goes. Good eye by Bates there. Three and one now. Wind up and the pitch. There's ball four. Bates draws the walk. Lewis Rossi to step in now with two on and two outs. And also two in for post 77, a two nothing lead. Wind up and the pitch. Strike one to the lefty. Turns the hitter away, ball one. From the stretch. Up high, two and one. The hitter's not looking down at Coach Johnson. Coach Johnson's getting a little irritated. They may be missing signs. Line up and the pitch to Rossi. That one low, three and one. Post 440's pitchers racking up the pitches. Yeah, it's been a long inning for him. And it's going to get a little bit longer as Rossi draws the walk. That'll load up the bases. Second straight walk from Mignoni. Ben Thomas, the center fielder, to step in. And the cleanup hitter. Big opportunity. Thomas went one for three in yesterday's victory over North Chelmsford with the RBI single in the first inning, that scored Ronan Bates. As Gluck will have a discussion with Mignoni. They're not holding the runner on at first base. So he'll get a nice juicy lead, two outs. And we'll see. Uh, Mignoni tries to pick off any of these runners. Thomas is going to crush this one over to right field. Back, back, and it is caught by the right fielder, Marsjanic, on the run. And that will be the third out of the inning, but not before. Post-77 plates two runs. It's 2-0 Ashland as we head to the third. Top half of the third inning. Top of the order due up for Newton. Jimmy Hodgson, Thomas Byrne, and Jack Marsjanic. Quite a bottom of the second for post 77. They ended up plating two runs on three hits. They left three on base. But a nice rally for Ashland. Hodgson, who flew out his first and only time up, steps into the batter's box. As Ringy set to deliver. Up the third base side, fair ball, glove by Rossi, throw to first, a little bit low, and it gets away from the first baseman. 
Hodgson will reach on the Aaron throw. Thomas Byrne will step in. Rossi should have been a little bit more aggressive on that ball and come through it rather than just winging it over there. It's the second error of the game for Ashland. Checking at first, runner back saved. Line up and the pitch. Fouled away. Some of the pitchers use a, use a dummy move. They get real long and they speed it up as they get closer to an actual pickoff. That one low. One and one now on Thomas Byrne. He reached his last time up on the first error of the game. That one's fouled away. One and two now. He deals. That one low. A little slow breaking ball there. He was talking earlier with his catcher when he'll throw the change up. The 2-2 two -two upstairs, full count. Should be pitching a contact here. Hodgson leading off of first, and that is going to be a walk for Byrne. Two on, no outs. Jack Marsjanic, the right fielder, to step in. Rossi now playing even with the bag at third. That one low, 1-0. One doesn't appear that the Ashland middle is keeping the runner close or giving the appearance that they're trying to keep him close. Another low pitch, 2 and oh. Well, Ringy having some troubles finding the strike zone so far in this inning. And this is hit in the air right side, and that is going to drop and will be a fair ball. One run is going to come around to score, and it is a two to one ball game. Marsjanic ends up at second base. I believe he came to second on the throw in. Hodgson scores, Thomas Byrne over at third. An RBI base hit for Marsjanic, and that'll bring up Mike Gately. Still no outs. That was a missed cutoff by the right fielder throwing the ball in. Had he cut that ball off, he might have had that runner go in a second. Oh, well. And this is hit up the left side. That drops in for a base hit. Thomas Byrne comes around to tie up the game. It's 2-2, two to two, an RBI single for Gately. Mars Janik moves up to third, and it is rally time for Newton, it appears. Brendan Mignon, the pitcher, will step in. Runners on the corners, no outs, two in. And just like that, this game is tied. And as this one is up the left side, past the dive of Rossi, it gets through, and the go-ahead run, Jack Mars Janik will score, an RBI single for Mignon. Mike Gailey moves up to second, and now Jackson Connerney, the left fielder, due up, but not before. Coach Derek Johnson will visit the mound to have a discussion with the struggling Tim Ringy. Three runs in for Newton, still no outs. Two runners on for post 440. And you think uh, this game's starting to tip towards Ashland's favor 
in the last half inning. But just like that, Newton rips the momentum away. As Ringy starting to struggle a little bit, and you wonder what the leash will be. Dylan O'Leary uh, was warming up a, quite a bit yesterday and pitched the final inning and earned the save against North Chelmsford, but he might be the guy they go to tonight if Ringy continues to struggle. He is available tonight. Says he feels good. He was pretty solid in the uh, inning yesterday to grab that save. That one low. Jackson Canerney grounded out his last time up. His first and only time up, which was last inning. There's a called strike, one and one. Two on, no outs, and three in. Four post, 440, a 3-2 to two lead now for Newton. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad bringing you Ashland to Legion Baseball from Ashland Middle School, a swinging strike there. He hit a long ball to left field, first, first at bat today. Rangy set to deliver the one, two. Breaking pitch, that didn't break quite the way he wanted it to, that'll even up the count. The sun has been covered up by clouds, so certainly no sun interference. As this is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the grass, the flip to the shortstop at second for one, the throw to first, and I believe they only got one. True. Yep. I think Tominski was a little lucky there. So Canerney reaches on the six to four force out. Gately moves up to third. And actually, since that was the first out, I believe you could put that down as a sacrifice. So Gluck will step in as he will get a piece of this one. And that is going to be a high fly ball to center field. It is caught, but tagging up from third and scoring is Gately. And it is now a four to two game. Went down the baseline like a thundering buffalo. Certainly did. So an RBI for Gluck, and now Willie Hodgson will step in. Sacrifice RBI there, and a runner taking off from first, and he is caught stealing. And that is going to end the inning, but not before Newton plates four runs. It is four to two as we head to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the third inning, five, six, and seven do up for post 77. Zach Pest and Sean Jouette and Ethan Tominski. And they certainly have some work to do after a four run top half of the inning for post 440. That one low, one and oh to Pesson. Mignoni set to deliver. Swinging strike. Mignoni threw a lot of pitches that last half inning. As that is fouled away and took a hop and ended up hitting him in the leg. One and two. Here's the one-two pitch. And there's a called strike, out number one. Nice breaking ball from Mignoni, and that'll bring up Sean Jouett. Inside, one and oh. 77 has got to get 440 to work hard this half inning. No one fouled away. No need for a quickie. The 1-1. One, one. Swing strike. Looks like a little hesitation with that swing. One and two. Time called by Jouette. Mignoni 
Mignoni set to deal. That was just outside. Did he swing? No, he did. A little friendly ribbing or not so friendly ribbing from the Ashland inside. And there is a called strike. And out number two, two straight strikeouts for Brandon Mignoni. And Ethan Tominski will step in. After struggling last inning, things looking good so far this inning for Mignoni. Ball one. Wind up and the pitch. Ball two. Two zero pitch. Check swing. He holds. Three and zero. He was taken all the way on that pitch. Wind up and the pitch. Three and one. Mignoni deals. And Tominski draws the walk. Two out walk and that'll bring up Jonathan Peston. Peston hit a single his last time up last inning. Ended up scoring as well on the RBI single from Tim Ringy. That's a pick. And pick over, called safe. I think uh, Mignoni looks at the distance and that's his trigger. He's gonna try again, safe. Trying to get in his, uh, in his uh, head once again. You don't want to make the third out on a pick. Back safe. Tominski having a nice little laugh over there. It's almost a little punkish if you ask me. But that's why I get paid for opinions. There's a strike. Big lead once again, the pick over, almost got him, but he's safe. <laughs> Line up and the pitch. And this will take a hop on the dirt in front of the grass and be gloved by the pitcher. And throw over to first, no problem. A one to three out to wrap up the inning. We will head to the fourth. Newton leading Ashland four to two. Top half of the fourth inning, eight, nine, and one. Two up for Newton as Willie Hodgson, the second baseman, steps in. Tim Ringy out there for another inning of work, hoping for a better outcome than last inning. There's strike one. Oh, and one to Hodgson. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit foul out of play. Hodgson had a single his last time up in the second inning. Ringy set the deal. Upstairs, one and two. I think Coach Johnson wants to get at least four out of Ringy. And this is foul down the third base side. Count remains one and two.
one two pitch check swing couldn't hold strike three Noah Shelton will come up to the plate I think that's was the, that was his changeup he was talking about earlier his Hodgkins was way out front of that pitch he deals there's a strike Like left hand, the pitch. Strike two. Newton certainly not showing patience here. Yeah, they're swinging away up there. Oh, and two now on Shelton. Jimmy Hodgson due up next. That one low, one and two establishing a pattern here if he gets up two strikes then he'll throw that change or breaking pitch whatever it is the one two ball two we'll just call it a waste pitch the two two pitch and this is a liner, but caught by Tominski, who was positioned perfectly, two away. Jimmy Hodgson to step in. Ball one. Hodgson is... 0 for 2 on the day, reach on an error and score to run last inning. Hits this one in the air, right side, foul territory, a little bit too far for Pesson. There's a little nubber off the bat. Pesson made a good effort to try to get that ball. Yep, he's maybe a step or two short. One and one count. And this is up the left side, glove by Tominski. Throw to first, not a problem. Six to three for the third out of the top of the fourth to the bottom of the inning we go. Newton leading Ashland four to two. Bottom of the fourth inning, nine, one, and two due up for post 77. Tim Ringy, Jake Obed, Ronan Bates. Ashland with some work to do, trailing by two. Brendan Mignoni out there for another inning of work. Ringy is one for one today, had an RBI single in the second. That one up above his head, one and oh. Well, he has a head taunting on that one, but it's a good sized crowd down here tonight. Yeah, they've certainly filled in throughout the course of the game and certainly getting their money's worth here today as well. A lot of action in this one. There's ball two. As I mentioned during the break, they got to make some hay here. In this inning with this pitcher, he's thrown a lot of pitches. Last inning was an easy inning for him, so they shouldn't let him off the hook. Right. As this is hit in the air, right side, and that is going to drop just foul. Step back in the batter's box. Two and one count. And Yoni deals. There's strike two. Wind up and the pitch. Ball three, they'll fill it up. A little bit above the letters on that one. Tough pitch to lay off of. It certainly was. Good eye by Ringy. 
That one's fouled away. Good battle here between Rangy and Mignoni. Pitcher versus pitcher. Full count pitch. Hit in the air, left side, and that'll drop into the glove of the shortstop. Hodgson really had a range over to make that catch, but does a nice job, one away. Jake Obid will step in. He struck out, I believe, on his last at bat, correct? He did, yep. There's strike one there. That was a bad swing. Coach Johnson knows it, and his teammates know it. A little smirk down the line after that one. That one low, one and one. Line up in the pitch. There's strike two. The one, two, fouled away. Jake Goldbid playing Ashland Legion baseball for his third consecutive season. Takes strike three there, two away. Jordan Bates will step in. Goldbid not happy with that one. 0 for 3 today at the plate. Bates is 1 for 1. He also has a walk. Ball 1. Mignani still has got plenty of gas and zoes there. Yeah, his velocity has not dropped a whole lot. First thing to go is their control. Yep. Wind up and the pitch. Just high. Reno now. There's a strike. Taken all the way on that one. 3-1 pitch. Check swing, was able to hold, and Bates draws the walk. It's his second walk of the game. And that'll bring up Lewis Rossi. Tying run at the plate. Bates with good speed. Certainly a threat to steal. Check in and throw a bit high, but the big first baseman, Mike Gately, pulls it down. It's almost airmailed over the first baseman's head. That's certainly a benefit to having a tall first baseman. That one inside. Mignoni set the deal. Hit in the air to the left side, foul territory, and it'll drop. The left fielder, Canerni, really ranged over to try to make that catch, but could not get there in time. Rossi has grounded out and reached on a walk so far. With two outs, I'd say send Ronan Bates after he throws over. Hit in the air to center field, and it is going to be caught by Thomas Byrne for the third and final out of the bottom of the fourth to the fifth inning we go. Newton leading Ashland 4-2. Top of the fifth inning. As Newton going to try to add on. Two, three, and four do up. Thomas Byrne, Jack Marsjanic, and Mike Gately. 
Tim Ringy out there for another inning of work. After having a successful 1 2 3 fourth inning. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, a high fly ball, and that is going to drop foul. And you have to expect Coach Johnson going to roll with Ringy as long as he can with a big amount of games coming up this week. You got Hudson tomorrow, and then of course playoffs start Friday. And depending on what happens with the weather, that Hudson game could end up getting pushed off. A lot of question marks weather-wise for the rest of the week. Is that one low, one and one? If there's a rain out, does that push out the playoffs? Uh, if it was rained out both days, yes. But obviously if it's rained out tomorrow, they'll play Thursday. As that is down the first base side, Peston picks it up, steps on the bag. Three unassisted for out number one. Jack Marsjanic will step in. But Thursday is the deadline for the regular season games, but if it was a league-wide rainout, I think, on a Thursday, they would just have to push it off. 1-0 and on Marsjanic. But we'll hope for the best here. We'll be optimistic and say there'll be no rain whatsoever. But down the third base side, picked up by Rossi. Throw across, and it is in time. Out number two. That ought to make Coach Johnson happy. Yep, solid throw from Rossi. That's a good experience for Lewis Rossi. Didn't get a whole lot of varsity experience, but getting plenty of experience here at the Legion level at third base and certainly developing as these games go on. Mike Gately steps in up the third base side and this past the reach of Rossi through no fault of his own and Gately is aboard with a two out single. Mike Gately having a nice day at the plate. He's two for three, pair of singles, had an RBI in the third. And the pitcher, Brendan Mignoni, will step in. He is one for two, an RBI single in the third. The dangerous part of this Newton lineup, four, five, and six. Hit in the air, left side towards the wall. Obed ranging back, and that's going to drop in front of him. A huge base hit. Gately is going to be waved around third, and he is going to keep going. He's halfway down the base path, and Rossi has the ball to throw home. Is off the mark, and Gately will score. The throw from Rossi a little bit high, allowing Gately to score. Brandon Mignoni ends up at third base. It was an RBI double, came to third on the throw home and it is now five to two Newton Jackson Canerney to step in that's a little breakdown in fundamentals should never let a runner get more than two-thirds down the down the baseline you gotta let it let it go before that so the catcher has a chance or you don't hit the base runner in the back Dylan O'Leary in the game to take over at third base Rough couple of nights for Rossi down at the hot corner. Mine up and the pitch, swing strike, 0 and 1. Yeah, and that throw home, he could have had the out still, but it was just a little bit high. Check swing, I don't think he held. I think he won around. 0-2, oh that was the call, he did go around. The 0-2. It's a dangerous pitch for the runner on third base. One and two. And this is hit in the air to right field and caught by Pesson. And that'll be the third out of the inning. Newton does play to run. It is 5 to 5-2, post 440, leading Ashland as we head to the bottom of the fifth. 
bottom of the fifth inning, four, five, and six, two up for post 77. Ben Thomas, the center fielder, Zach Pest in the first baseman, and Sean Drew at the catcher. And now they have some extra work to do, trailing by three after Newton plated a run in the top half of the inning. An RBI base hit for Brandon Mignoni allowed Mike Gately to score after an errant throw from Rossi to home. Leg lift and the pitch. And this one is tattooed over to left center. That'll drop in front of Kanerni. Thomas is going to round first, head over to second, and it is picked up by the center fielder, thrown to the cutoff man, Ben Thomas aboard with a stand-up double. Zach Pesson will step in. Nice way to start off the bottom of the inning, four post 77. That ball was crushed. Certainly was, a great piece of hitting. Thomas is uh, one for two today, also had a walk in the first. Pesson 0 for two, hoping to change that, and he will, he'll take one off the back, and he will get a free pass over to first base. So now two on, no outs, Sean Jouette to the plate. Tying run at the plate. And Matt Gluck going to have a discussion with Brendan Mignoni. Sean Jouett is one for two at the plate, had a single in the second, also scored a run and stole a base. Takes strike one. Sean's got two more years at the high school level. Rode the pine at JV because they had a senior catcher. Yeah, he'll be the starter next year more than likely for Holliston. Checking at second and the runner slides back safe. Little trickery there from Mignoni. Looked over at first and then turned towards second. Well, there was nobody covering first. Line up and the pitch. That one low. One, one, two, duet. And this one is. Hit into right center, that'll drop down. And the lead runner, Ben Thomas, will be held up at third, so it'll be bases loaded as Pesson had to slide back to second, rounded second, but slid back safely. A single four duet. So now it's bases loaded, no outs, Ethan Tominski at the plate. Perfectly executed cutoff by post 440. So good piece of hitting by duet. And now there'll be a discussion on the mound. James Greeley, the head coach, will come out and talk to his battery, Brendan Mignoni and Matt Gluck. And it appears that Mignoni will stay in the game. There'll just be a discussion about the situation and what to do here. Ethan Tominski with a big opportunity. He's 0 for 1. Did walk in the third. And we'll see if the shortstop can drive in any runs here. It's seven, eight, and nine due up now for post 77. No outs, bases loaded. They're in at the corners. All runners leading off. That one's going to get by. Ben Thomas coming around. He'll score. Five to three, Newton. Ashland, I think. Or excuse me. Oh, no, I was right. Five to three, Newton. You're right. <laughs> I'm wrong enough, Larry. <laughs> well, that, well, I'm, I'm much. <laughs> Don't try to make me wrong when I'm right. <laughs> well, that, that was... My bad. <laughs> Domensky's got a chance to tie up this game with a base hit. He certainly does. Wind up and the pitch. That one low. Two and oh on Tominski. We talked about it last inning. The fatigue factor, control, 
Second and third, no outs. Hit in the air, foul territory. Is it playable? No, just out of the reach of Gately. It's pretty close to that one. He's not a world-class sprinter, that Gately. Yeah, but the, for those fans over there, I don't know if I'd want that guy running at me. No, no. You're absolutely right, Tom. Two and one on Tominski. One run already in on the wild pitch. Post 77 now trailing only by two. The bunt is executed, and that is going to be a strike. Runner back to third. That did not go the way Tominski intended. Two and two. Pesson leading off of third once again. Now one outside, full count. Due up next is Jonathan Pesson, the right fielder. And there's ball four. Tominski draws the walk. That'll load up the bases once again with no outs. Pinch hit her up. Seymour. Yep. Brad Seymour will step in. It's going to be all. Yeah, we're going to have a pitcher's change here, it looks like. And Dylan O'Leary appears to be uh, getting loose for post 77 and maybe coming to the game to pitch. Well, actually, the co yep, the coach will take the ball. And we'll have a few positional changes here for post 440. We're going to take a quick timeout and get updated on the changes, and then we'll get you updated. Post 77 trailing by two, but they are threatening no outs, bases loaded. When we return to the bottom of the fifth, it's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Continuing on with the bottom of the fifth inning, Let's tell you about the positional changes for Newton Post 440. The new pitcher is Jimmy Hodgson, who was the starting shortstop. The starting right fielder, Jack Marsjanic, is now the shortstop. And the starting pitcher, Brandon Mignoni, is now the right fielder for Post 440. Brad Seymour at the plate, fouls that one into the backstop, 0-1. Bases loaded, no outs, a run already in for Post 77. Newton leading 5-3. For those of you just joining us, you're missing an exciting one, but a good time to join us. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. One and one now to Seymour. On camera, Ben Butkus. From the stretch is Hodgson. He delivers, hit in the air, right side, foul out of play. And two count. Both teams really want this win. This game is going to have a huge impact on the standings. And we'll refresh your memory on the standings as soon as we can. Wind up and the pitch. That one is just outside. Two and two is the count. What did Ashland 77 do against 440 in their earlier matchup? to uh, look back in the archives at that one. That one upstairs. But as far as the standings, Waltham 12 and five, Ashland 11 and five, Newton is 10 and five. So all those teams are neck and neck. Natick also in the mix at 10 and six. North Chelmsford nine and seven. Wind up and the pitch. And this is popped up right side. And it is playable for Gately or maybe not, just out of his reach. Lowell eight and eight, Sudbury eight and six, Medford seven and eight. Those are the teams in the mix. Medford almost out of the mix. That was not an infield fly because it would take extraordinary effort to get to that ball. Right. And it has to be fair. Two two count on Seymour. There's strike three, got him looking, one away. Now stepping in is Tim Ringy. Ringy is one for two today, had an RBI single in the second inning. 
Newton playing the double play depth in the infield. Up the middle, and it is going to be gloved by the shortstop. Steps on second for one, a throw over to first, and not in time, but a run does score for post 77 as Pesson comes around. Obid can make some amends here for his early at bats, earlier at bats, excuse me. Ringy reaches on the RBI force out. And it is now a five to four game. And Jake Obit has a chance to tie things up. Two outs in the inning. That right fielder is playing really close to the line out there. Swinging strike, runner from first taking off. The throw to second is off the mark and it's a stolen bag for Ringy. Got a pants full of dirt, Ringy. Yeah, and a well-executed steal there. 0-1 now on Obid. From the stretch is Hodgson. Just outside, 1-1. One one. Ronan Bates on deck. That last run charged to the starter, Brendan Mignoni. Wind up in the pitch. Outside. Two and one now on Obit, who's 0 for 3 today. Two runners in scoring position here. They can. Swinging strike. Go ahead with a base hit. Two and two now. Newton pitcher isn't particularly overpowering. Time called. Obit's real good about calling time. He's got that clock in his head. Maybe it's five seconds he'll wait and then he'll back out. And that is fouled towards the Ashland dugout area. And to answer your question from before, I am fairly certain that Newton defeated Ashland the last time these two teams met in Newton, but I will confirm that very shortly. Wind up and the pitch. And that is off of Obid. So he gets the free pass to first. Second hit batter of the game by a Newton pitcher. When you were playing, they didn't have helmets, did they? Is that your uh, excuse for forgetting things? It's very true. Ronan Bates will step in. He's a dangerous hitter, Ronan Bates. Swinging strike. He deals. Another strike there. Oh, and two on Ronan Bates. He's 0 for 1 at the plate, has a pair of walks. Or excuse me, 1 for 1 with a pair of walks. Fouled away. 0 and 2 remains the count. Runners are going on the pitch. Bases loaded, two outs, two in for post 77, but they trail by one. On the ground, up the middle, glove by the second baseman, throw to first, and it is going to be in time. A four to three ground out will wrap up the bottom of the fifth, but it is now a one run game. Newton leading Ashland five to four as we head to the top of the sixth. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM and WACA TV. Top half of the sixth inning, some positional changes. Four post 77, Dylan O'Leary is now the new pitcher. And we have the third, third baseman of the game for post 77, Jack Larsh over at third base, taking over for Dylan O'Leary, who was at third base. O'Leary came in for Lewis Rossi last inning. Wind up and the pitch to Matt Gluck is ball one. O'Leary deals upstairs. 
2 and 0. Oh. Dillon comes right over the top. His second straight game on the mound. That one low, but pitched one inning. He got the save yesterday against North Chelmsford. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. 2 and 1. Dillon's dad is out in center field. And there's ball four. Gluck draws the walk, and that'll bring up Willie Hodgson. A 5-4 Newton lead. Post 77 put up two runs on the bottom of the fifth. Gluck is not going to stray too far from first base because he'd be a dead man if he tried to take off. Line up and the pitch. That one low. Two and O, oh, the count on Hodgson. He's one for two today. There's a strike. The two one. Fouled into the backstop. That'll even it up. Dylan's working really, really quick. Leading a bit off of first. There's strike three. Gets Hodgson looking one away. Noah Shelton will step in, the ninth hitter in the lineup and the third baseman. I think Dylan has an internal ch chuckle with that one. Primarily a fastball pitcher. Upstairs. Line up and the pitch. Inside. Two and O. Oh. Larry certainly works quickly on the mound. There's strike one. Two one. Three and one. That one low, and that is the second walk of the inning from O'Leary. Shelton to first, Gluck over to second. One out, and Jimmy Hodgson to the plate, the shortstop. He's 0 for 3, reached on an error and scored a run in third. There's a strike. Dillon should be seeing some action on the mound next year for Hopkinton High. Strike two. The 0-2. Swinging strike. Two away. Two strikeouts for O'Leary. Thomas Burns step in. One of the things that's most noticeable about Dylan O'Leary is even when he gets into a bit of trouble, he continues to just work quickly and throw his pitches fast. As this is a bunt up the third base side, picked up by Larsh. He has no play, so he will just hold on to it. Bases loaded with two outs. I think that's a second bunt signal down, bunt single down the third base line. That young man. Jack Mars Janik, the right fielder to step in. Big opportunity here. Upstairs, 1 and 0. That one upstairs. I believe Brad Seymour has also taken over in center field. That was one of the changes made by post 77. Got 3 0 here. Yep. If I'm Mars Janik, I'm certainly not swinging. And he won't. And that is going to be a Newton run. Walk for Mars Janik. And Gluck comes around to score. Shelton up to third. Burn up to second. 
two outs, bases loaded, one in. It's now six to four, Newton. The pitch to the cleanup hitter, Mike Gately, swinging strike number one. One and one. Dylan's just rearing back and letting it go. Two and one. He deals. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to center field. And Seymour's under it, he will make the catch. And that is going to be the third out of the inning, but not before Newton does plate a run. It is six to four as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning, three, four, and five due up for post 77. Dylan O'Leary will have his first at bat of the game to start things off, followed by Ben Thomas and Zach Peston. Or actually, Brad Seymour came into the game to take over in center field, so he'll probably bat in the spot of Ben Thomas. But O'Leary going to try to get things started off of Jimmy Hodgson, who's out there in his second inning of work. That one upstairs, 1-0. Starter Brendan Mignoni for Newton post 440 went four plus innings, giving up four runs, all of them earned in seven hits. A swing strike there, one and one. Didn't get cheated with that swing. Wind up and the pitch upstairs, two and one. Set to deal. There's a strike. Upstairs. Two and two. The starter four post 77. Tim Ringy went five innings, giving up seven hits, five runs, four of which were earned. A swinging strike there, and O'Leary goes down. That'll bring up Ben Thomas. He hit the ball deep last time up. Up after Thomas is Zach Pesson. That one's fouled away. 0 and 1. Set to deal. Inside. Thomas will be a senior next year at Holliston High. And this is hit up the middle. That'll drop into center field, and it is a one-out base hit for Thomas. Zach Pesson will step in. Do up after Zach is the catcher, Sean Jouette. And this is hit high in the air to left field and caught by Kinerny, two away. Runner stays put at first. John Jouette to step in. Coach Johnson has abandoned his third base coaching spot. Now he returns because he heard me. Runner leading off of first, the 0-1. Fouled away. 440's pitcher has not seen no uh, inclination to throw over. Now one and one actually on Jouet. Ethan Tominski do up next. There's a strike, one and two. Post 77 down to their final four outs. 
That one low runner taking off from first. The throw up is going to be not in time. They're giving him a stolen base. Ooh. I don't know about that one, but they'll take it. The Newton coach might have something to say about that. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Uh, that looked pretty clear to me, but we'll take it. We're what? homers. We're homers. Yeah. He was safe by Absolutely. a mile. <laughs> two and two. We've paid off the umpire because he's from Hopkinton. <laughs> Done everything we can. Takes a look at second and deals. Hit in the air. A high fly ball to center field. And it is caught by Thomas Byrne, who is playing deep center field. And rightfully so, as he makes the catch for the third and final out of the bottom of the sixth to the top of the seventh we go. Newton leading Ashland six to four. Top half of the seventh inning. Newton going to try to add some security runs. Five, six, and seven do up. Brendan Mignoni, Jackson Canerney, and Matt Gluck. Let's face Dylan O'Leary out there for his second inning of work. Mignoni steps in. He's having a good day at the plate. Two for three and a pair of RBIs. Take strike one. Oh, and one. Newton trying to rack up a huge win here at Ashland Middle School. One and one. This is hit in the air, foul out of play, one and two. Now looking at the standings once again, if Newton wins this, they actually do have a tie as well. They're 10, five and one. So if they win, this will be 11-5-1. and one. Ashland will fall to 11-6. and six. Newton will jump up a little bit on Ashland on the standings as there's a swinging strike for Mignoni, one away. Jackson Canerney to step in. That one low. It's certainly... Uh, Quite a race for those four playoff spots in zone five. That one outside, 2-0. and oh. Could Ashland find themselves uh, on the outside looking in, or are they pretty much locked it up, no, a spot? It's not locked up yet. Not locked up yet. It's more than likely they'll get in, but certainly uh, not clinched yet. Just informed that uh, if they get a win at Hudson, yep. they get a spot. Control their own destiny. Three and one. Three and two. Dylan's been very dependable when he gets out there and gets into a rhythm. Upstairs, and Canerney draws the walk. And here comes Gluck. It's the fourth walk surrendered by O'Leary, and now Matt Gluck will step in. He's having quite a day. Two for two at the plate. He's also walked. He has an RBI and a run scored. Taking some ribbing from the Ashland bench. Maybe it's his high socks. He's the only player on 440 that are wearing his socks high. 1-0 count. 2-0. I think no matter what happens here, it's going to be O'Leary the rest of the way. Hit in the air, out of play on the left side. Got a good piece of that one. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. That's what Dylan needs to be, right at the knees. One and two. That one's fought off. Ryer leading off of first. Dylan steps off. 
Takes a look at first and is now set to deliver the 2-2. Just outside, that'll fill up the count. Trying that rolling breaking ball two times in a row. And he gives up the walk. Second straight walk from O'Leary. Runners on first and second. Willie Hodgson, the second baseman, to step in. That was how O'Leary got himself into a bit of trouble last inning, giving up a few walks. Hit in the air, a high fly ball. It seems to be playable on the right side, and it is caught by Pesson. Two away. Noah Shelton, the third baseman, to step in. Bottom part of the order for 440. Checking no. at second, runner back safe. Last thing you want to do, Dylan, is throw the ball in the center field. He hasn't had that much experience on the mound this year. Pitch one inning for Hopkins and High. There's a strike. Wide up and the pitch. Outside. One and one to Shelton, who is 0 for 2 today. Did walk in the sixth inning. Up the third base side, off of Larsh, picked up by the shortstop. He doesn't have a play. Everybody's safe. Bases loaded, two outs. You've Not seen some bad hops over there at third base today. Yeah. And that one, uh, tough play to make. I'm giving that a single. Jimmy Hodgson will step in. That was right off of Larsh, that that awkward bounce. He didn't know lay it, so he got his body in front of it. And that actually probably saved the run. That one outside, 1-0. Oh. These two free, free passes Dylan gave up earlier. May have and this is hit him. in the air, two left center. That'll drop in for a base hit. One in to score, second run behind him. And now the throw to second, and they will get the hitter, but not before two more runs score for Newton Post 440. And we will head to the bottom of the seventh with Newton leading Post 77, eight to four. Bottom of the seventh, post 77 down to their final three outs as Tominski takes that one up high. One and oh. Seven, eight, and nine do up for Ashland. Tominski, Seymour, and Ringy. That one turns them away. Two and oh. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Two and one, now the count. Hit in the air, right side, foul out of play. An eight to four lead for Newton post 440 over post 77. Newton has scored eight runs on 11 hits, committed three errors, that one down low. Full count now on Tominski. Up the middle it goes, past the reach of the pitcher. Slow roller over to the shortstop, throw to first, got him. Six to three. That'll bring up Brad Seymour. Came in the game as the center fielder. And Thomas moved over to right field. Seymour getting his first at bat. One and oh to Brad Seymour. Jimmy Hodgson trying to grab the save here. There's a strike.
Now their final two outs. Line up and the pitch. That one low, two and one. Pro 77 has one final game of the regular season. And that is a continuation of a game that was supposed to take place in late June against Hudson. That one fouled away, one and two. They will continue that game up three to nothing, heading to the second inning. And they did Hudson a favor by continuing that game in Hudson since Hudson has another game scheduled for that day to complete their season schedule. Wind up and the pitch. Nasty breaking ball, gets them looking. Two away. Post 77 down to their final out. And we'll have a new hitter into the game. It's Jack Lars hitting for, hitting in the ninth spot. Wind up and the pitch. Up the left side, glove by the shortstop, the throw across, and it is in time. A one, two, three, bottom of the seventh, and that is the way the game will end the final score. Newton defeats Ashland 8-4. to four. Newton scores eight runs on 11 hits, commits three errors. Ashland scores four runs on eight hits and commits an error. Post 77 took the lead in the bottom of the second. They played it two runs. An RBI single from Tim Ringy helped the cause in that inning, and then later Sean Jouett scored on an error, so that accounted for those two runs, and then Newton struck back in the top of the third, scoring four runs of their own on a rally. Jack Marsjanic, Mike Gately, Brendan Magnoni, and Matt Gluck all had RBI singles. It was four to two until the top of the fifth, in which Newton added another run, an RBI double from Brendan Magnon, drove in Mike Gately. Post 77 responded on the bottom of the fifth with two runs of their own as an RBI single from Tim Ringy uh, allowed Ben Thomas to score and also Zach Pesson would score in the inning. It was a one run game at that point, but then the very next inning, Newton played it another run as a walk delivered uh, to Jack Marsjanic with bases loaded, allowed Matt Gluck to score and then Newton added a couple of security runs in the top of the seventh, a two RBI single by Jimmy Hodgson, drove in Jackson Connerney and Matt Gluck. Hodgson was then thrown out going to second, trying for the double, but the two runs did score for Newton as they will grab the eight to four victory over Ashland Post 77, a crucial win for Newton. Standings wise, Newton improves to 11, 5, and 1 on this season. Post 77 falls to 11 and 6 on the season. And this should certainly make the last day of the regular season, which is scheduled to be tomorrow, a very interesting situation as several teams still in the mix for the four playoff spots in zone five the final score for the final time newton scores eight runs on 11 hits commits three errors ashland scores four runs on eight hits and commits one error as newton gets the eight to four victory over post 77 for ben buttkiss on camera my broadcast partner larry sacklad i'm tom nappy we thank you for joining us for this broadcast of ashland legion baseball on hcam television in hopkinton or WACA-TV in Ashland. Thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.